Good evening. You guys excited? I am. I'm over the top excited. So uh, Chuck Gerard's music with Love Song is the stuff I grew up on. I got saved in 1974, and as a young teenage Christian, driving around Albuquerque in my hot rods, listening to Christian music, and he started singing this stuff here, and I was like, I'm back again. Um, I want to uh, open up, first of all, with a prayer. Would you guys like to stand with me? Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together here tonight. What a blessing for us to be able to be here and to, to lift up your name and worship you. And um, Lord, we know that we're going to be blessed by Elisa Childers and Chuck Gerard. But Lord, we want to be blessed by you. We pray that you would minister to us, touch our hearts, strengthen us. What a blessing for us to be here tonight. What a good thing for us to be here. And we want to reflect on the Savior being born, the baby who came, who was God. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would touch our hearts, that we might get a sense of the expectation that Israel had for the Messiah who would set them free. And we thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You could be seated. Uh, I want to kind of give a little introduction before this first song. Jeremiah was a prophet who was around just before they were brought into captivity. You remember he prophesied about the captivity that they were going to go into. And then Jeremiah was arrested and thrown into a pit almost went after they went into captivity. Then he was rescued and imprisoned until they were taken into captivity. And then he was freed and ended up in Egypt. He did two things. He lamented over the destruction of Jerusalem... And he wrote about them returning, about the, whole, about the Messiah coming to them and the hope that they had for the Messiah. And I want to read you Jeremiah 23, 5. This is Jeremiah speaking of the hope of Israel for the return. They were waiting for the Messiah. And now they're in captivity. He, see, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will rise to you a branch of David of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness on the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now, this is the name by which he is called the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say as the Lord lives and brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But as the Lord lives, who brought us and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all of the countries where they had been driven them. And they shall say that they will dwell in the land safely. So you get a sense of how Israel longed for the Messiah. And here we are celebrating the birth of the Messiah. Elisa Childers and Chuck Gerard, father and daughter. Welcome them, please.
Thank you so much. We are so excited to be with you. I think it's been since I was in high school, which was a little while ago, that my dad and I actually sang together on a stage. So tonight's going to be a fun night. We're going to do some Christmas songs. We're going to do some individual songs. Um, for anybody who's unfamiliar with my story, I followed in my dad's footsteps, as you're going to learn about what his footsteps are if you don't already know, and was a part of a contemporary Christian music group, loved Jesus my whole life but had a really significant faith crisis as an adult. And this really rattled me. And as I think about Christmas, the Christmas season and the incarnation of Jesus, God made flesh and how important it is what we believe about God. I was in a situation where all these beliefs were challenged and I was told these things aren't true. And so the Lord walked me through that process. And that was over 10 years ago. And over the past 10 years, I've written songs along that journey of God rebuilding my faith. And this first one I'm gonna sing is a song called Strong Tower. Originally, I called it the Doubter's Hymn because just as I was first coming out of that extreme doubt, I started singing truths that I knew were true in my heart, but my head hadn't caught up yet. And that is that the Lord, his name is a strong tower and we are safe when we run into it. So this is Strong Tower. Your name is a strong tower, standing firm in every storm, ever shielding and protecting from deception, siren song. Thank you. I know a 
it's hard, but you can make it. I know that this is true because you have a high priest who was tempted like you. Look to your perfect redeemer. His righteousness covers you. He'll give you strength for the path that he's called you to. So pray for me. Thank you so much. I, uh, I get the privilege and honor of bringing my dad back on on the stage. And as he comes out, we're going to show a short video. Let me just ask you a question. How many of you have seen the movie Jesus Revolution? All right. So you know the band in the movie called Love Song. That was my dad's band. So I, I, I said I followed in his footsteps. And he really laid the groundwork not just for me but for every Christian, contemporary Christian artists that you listen to today. And so we're going to show a little clip from that, and then you can welcome my dad, Chuck Gerard, back to the stage. This next song I'm sure that you'll all recognize. And I'd just like to say about this song that I'm really thankful that the lyrics to this next song can be true and that uh, there's a change, a real change starting to happen in our churches. It's the movie clip, but this is okay. You can let this go. We'll catch up. Of people who know and love Jesus Christ. 
This is a song from And this next song kind of chronicles what's been happening. And, That's me. You know, we can call it the Jesus Movement quote. About 53 the, years the ago. The press calls it that, but really we prefer to think of it as the movement of Jesus. It's the same thing that's been going on for 2,000 years. And the only thing different about it now is that there's a lot of publicity about it, you know. And I just praise the Lord that this next song can be a true song and not just a nice little tune somebody made up about something they wish could be. Well, okay. crazy being in a church. I've never been in a church before. I don't think any of us have. We call ourselves Love Song because, well, we sing songs about love, real love. Dig it? One way. Now, uh, we're going to be back here next Sunday as well, except for Tommy. He's uh, got to serve out the rest of his drug sentence. That happens. But he only has three more months. So praise the Lord. Thank you to Pastor Chuck for having us come through. Thank you, fellas. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, casting is amazing. Guy looked just like me, didn't he? Can you dig it? Actually, I just want to say on the getting the wrong video up, I think we all decided this at rehearsal. We had so many things going. I think we forgot to tell the guy running the videos that this was going to be first. So it's not on whoever that was. I don't know who's, who's doing the video. But we'll play the other one in just a minute. But anyhow, it was a great uh, honor to be portrayed in the movie, uh, The Jesus Revolution. And um, the truth of the matter is we were sort of the, the main band at that time. Because uh, that story in the movie, even though it's, it purports to kind of span the whole Jesus revolution, it was really about that two years when Greg Laurie became a Christian, started his church, and we were the prevailing prominent band at Calvary Chapel during that time. It's fair to say that Love Song was the first band to become well-known in the United States for playing rock-oriented music. Larry Norman was ahead of us, but he wasn't a band. So uh, as far as a band, we were the, probably the first band. By the way, we're doing a documentary on our band called A Band Called Love Song that we hope will be out early next year. And uh, there's a lot of fiction in the movie, okay? The movie is very dramatized. It's a great movie, don't get me wrong. Um, I think it's excellent to bring your friends to, and uh, it has a real altar call in it when the Greg character is being baptized, and Lonnie asks him if he, want, if he wants to make a decision, and the prayer that, that Jonathan Rumi prays as Lonnie is pretty much verbatim what we used to pray when we would pray people into the kingdom. So uh, I respect the fact they left the altar call prayer in there and uh, got a lot of things in there that sometimes Hollywood would have you not do, you know, so I think that's wonderful. But anyhow, uh, yeah, so a little bit about me, very little. Um, August 27th, I celebrated my 80th birthday. And people say, how are you doing? And I say, well, my heart started this morning, you know, so I think it's good from up, up here, you know, uh, from there on. Uh, and then uh, last week or in the last few week to 10 days, my wife either texted me or called me and she said, you know what? We both forgot our 52nd anniversary yesterday. <laughs> so Karen's watching right now, uh, probably. Uh, yeah, we missed many uh, anniversaries. I don't know why. It just happens that way. Uh, but November 27th, we've been married 52 years to, to the same woman. Besides Elisa, I have three other daughters and I have six grandkids. Uh, we're a member of the Fentanyl Club. Our 21-year-old grandson is in heaven. 
uh, from a fentanyl overdose. We had to deal with that about three years ago, but uh, uh, that's our family, and this is what we've been doing for 53 years, and it's been a joy to serve God um, through thick and thin, and there's been thin, but uh, as I look down the, the lens of the my home going in the not too distant future, it's been a great ride and I'm grateful for everything God has done to use my life. The clip that uh, they played accidentally was um, from a concert in 1973 that we did with Love Song. Nobody videotaped back then. But we were at Trinity College in San Antonio and this, this kids came up to us at soundcheck and they said, our school just started a video class. Can we record your concert tonight? as a class project. Well, little did we know what a, a historic uh, 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 piece of, of footage that would be 50 years later as he emerged from Calvary. It's a long story, but it almost got taken to the dumpster, got rescued, and uh, we have a full-length concert of our band in 1973, uh, which is almost unheard of. I took this little clip of, of Little Country Church, which is a song that is in the movie, and uh, so now we'll replay it, and you can hear the, the wisdom of my young Christian years as I set up this song. This next song I'm sure that you'll all recognize. And I'd just like to say about this song that I'm really thankful that the lyrics to this next song can be true, and that uh, there's a change, a real change starting to happen in our churches, and no longer are they just remaining buildings but they are becoming buildings made out of living stones of people who know and love Jesus Christ. And this next song kind of chronicles what's been happening. And, you know, we call it the Jesus Movement quote because the, the press calls it that. But really, we prefer to think of it as the movement of Jesus. It's the same thing that's been going on for 2,000 years. And the only thing different about it now is that there's a lot of publicity about it, you know. And I just praise the Lord that this next song can be a true song and not just a nice little tune somebody made up about something they wish could be.
That's a kind of fun, fun thing to do, to be able to do it, to have the old footage. Hang on. Another song from the movie. Thank you so much. Um, something that's here tonight that uh, we'll give you is the, you know, uh, just, I don't want to really say too much about the movie. Most of it is actually fictionalized. It's based on real people and real events, and it gives the overview of, of what happened during the Jesus movement. But um, it, uh, I have my book with me tonight, and um, it's called Rock and Roll Preacher, and I re actually wrote the book way before the movie came out. Um, so we didn't know that was going to happen yet. And uh, it's really the kind of the more factual backstory of what happened during the Jesus Revolution. And if you're interested in more of the, the real story of what happened, it deals with the beginning of contemporary Christian music. It deals with the beginning of Calvary Chapel denomination because we played there when there was only one Calvary Chapel. So, you know, that, the one in Costa Mesa, they call it the mothership, right? And... Um, Anyhow, so we had quite a history with all that stuff. So many things happened in my life. Uh, the vineyard started in my living room. Uh, you know, just different stuff in the book that uh, you may be interested in if, the, if you were interested in the movie. Another cool thing that's happening for me is that I'm making my first studio album in 30 years. <laughs> Almost done. Uh, I want to be clear. I had a couple albums in between. I have... a. Uh, an album called Voice of the Wind that was a um, uh, uh, mellow kind of uh, personal contemplative worship CD 
that uh, is mostly my original songs, but recorded in front of a live audience and then embellished. And then I had two volumes of that, and I had a Christmas set CD that came out. Uh, the only one that's here tonight is Voice of the Wind. But uh, actually having guys in the studio to play live hasn't happened in 30 years. So we're at the very tail end of that process, and I'm going to play one of the songs from the album for you tonight. And one of the cool things about making an album at my age, I used to worry when I was younger, I used to think, oh, what's my demo? Well, I didn't really, to be honest, I never thought about that stuff. The record company did. What's your demographic? Is there a radio-friendly single on the album? Will we get radio airplay? You know, I just put out music. But I still had to consider those things and making this album independently and taking four years now to make it. Uh, I've had a chance to live with it and uh, kind of don't care what I put on it. I put what I want on it. <laughs> You don't like it, you don't have to buy it. You know, that's how I look at it. But I think you'll enjoy it. And so I wrote this song. How many people write songs about old people? Hardly anybody, right? Because it's all a youth culture. So I wrote this song about my wife's uh, grandmother, uh, Grandma Sally, who was the matriarch of our family. Uh, Lisa got to know Grandma Sally. Some of our, a couple of our younger daughters, she had died already, and they didn't really get to know her. But what a contribution to our family life she was. She was a, you know, a bun in the back, a button up to here, no lipstick, no makeup, no nonsense Christian woman that I'm really glad that Elisa and Kristen, my older daughters at least, got to know a woman of God like the, that who never condemned them for their choices in clothes or makeup or anything. She just walked the walk. So this is a tribute to grandmas and moms, for that matter, everywhere. And uh, it's off the new album, which will be coming hopefully in maybe the first quarter of next year. We're real, real close. But I got a lot of songs on here, and now I have to get, we're in the G's. There we are. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Touches her old wedding ring. She keeps by her heart on an old piece of string. She doesn't have much to do in a day. Her children are grown, her friends gone away. Her heart is still full, though she is alone. But something inside knows she'll soon be at home. She thinks of the man who was love of her life. Her memories are clear of when she was a wife. She thinks of the love she shared with one man. She has no regrets. The Bible that sits on the chair by the bed has never been idle. It's always been read. It's been the guide, the course of her life, living and active and sharp as a knife. Her constant companion as she's run the rate. It's seen her through every trial that she's faced. Now that she's come to the crossroad of life, her treasures in heaven above. She's never seen London or traveled to France. She wouldn't have gone there if she'd had the chance. Happy to be where she knew she belonged. She just danced in place. Many things in her life she did not understand. But she always knew she was safe in his hands. Her faith sometimes wavered, but it never grew cold. He was always the gates she stands 
Well, we were known as a rock band, and but most of the big songs that people loved were our ballads, Two Hands and Feel the Love and other songs that, uh, but we loved the ballads too. So I'm gonna rock out with one song here off the new album, okay? Yeah, come on, we gotta rock a little bit here. So here we go. Uh, I gotta find the right one though, okay. <laughs>
coming soon, tentatively titled Moonrise Serenade. Um, I'm going to close with this song from the movie that um, it was funny. Elisa told me, you know, she does a lot of these conferences for a lot of times college kids. And she'd tell the story about me being in Love Song. And they'd kind of go, oh, cool, you know. And then after the movie came out, she said, I'd say my dad was in Love Song. And they go, oh, your dad was in Love Song? <laughs> the power of the movie, right? And she said, all the young kids are singing this song now. They know this song way back from 50 years ago, since I opened up the door and then we'll, we'll move it along here. A uh, little baby Christian song about the innocence of first finding and walking with God. going to take some time to talk a little bit, have a little bit of an interview, find out a little bit of background from these guys. Just a quick question. How many of you guys are not from Calvary Chapel, are visiting here tonight? Raise your hand. Would you guys welcome them? All right. Good to have you here. Chuck, you want to sit here? You sit here. I'll sit here. There you go. 
And um, if you are visiting with us, really glad to have you here. Uh, out in our visitor center, we have a welcome bag for you, a gift bag. It's just our way of saying thank you for being here. And we hope you're blessed. We hope you're touched by the time that you spend here. So I wanted to start with a couple pictures. So um, I asked them to pull them up. So we've got uh, some pictures in the back here for Let's put the first one up. So this is uh, Elisa's there on the right side. And uh, you want to give us the kids? Yeah, next to Elisa, there's uh, Cherie. Then that's baby Nikki, who now has given us our newest grandchild in my arms. And then our oldest, Kristen, on the left, with the glasses that she dies for. She just, <laughs> she just said, Dad, why don't you buy me another pair of those? On the left. Well, great. So then we got, I think we have a picture of the band next, which we've already seen some of that. So that's a love song back in the day. Yeah, that was out on uh, Malibu Canyon somewhere. Yeah. A, a National what Geographic. What year was that? Uh, 72. I think it's so. No beard now. Well, I got a beard. You do? In the picture or here? Oh, no, there. Oh, yeah, he's the second to the Oh, right. I thought he, oh, okay, yeah. there you go. You got a big beard. See, he thought I was, <laughs> he thought I was a short guy. <laughs> All right, let's have another one. We got the next one, which is just you, Chuck. There you go. Handsome oh, yeah. fella, handsome guy. Part of my album shoot for the album, Take It Easy. And Alisa, we couldn't leave you out. Oh, no. We had to add you in. That's <laughs> so good. Let's get a picture of, of, oh, we had one more. All right, now we can't leave Elise out. So we got the picture of Zoe Girls here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Elisa without the beard. <laughs> that, I, did, I did not Elisa, have a beard. That's Elisa without the beard. <laughs> there, oh, there we go, one more. We had one more, we added in. You got to see it. Yeah. That was our first album. <laughs> that's your yeah. first album. All right, um, so uh, just a little bit of background about these guys, if you don't know much about them. Um, Elisa is an apologist, and that was how I first uh, got in introduced her, found her stuff. Uh, she wrote a book called Another Gospel, which is a very powerful book. Um, it, it documents a crisis in her life and a crisis of faith and what it took for her to come out of it. And if you are struggling at all, with questions that people bring up today about the Bible or, or the criticisms that they have about the Bible or just any, the, the, uh, the, a lot of the stuff that's coming out today, then pick up that book. I'm telling you, it's, it's great. I suggest it and A Case for Faith for people who are struggling uh, because it's, it's really, really good. She's got another one called um, know, Live Your Own Truth and Other Lies. And that's a great book as well. And you got a new one coming out? Yeah, I actually have a new one. Are you all familiar with the phenomenon of deconstruction? Have you heard that word in the context of faith? So me and my co-author, Tim Barnett, have written a book called The Deconstruction of Christianity that really documents the movement. And it's written for the church to help you understand the people in your life that are in deconstruction and how you can engage with them. Um, but I did want to let you know that it is not out yet. But there are pre-orders available. So if you go to Amazon and you search The Deconstruction of Christianity, you can pre-order it. And if you pre-order it now, anytime before January 30th, you can go to the deconstructionofchristianity.com and fill out the form, and immediately you'll get an email with a free chapter, and you'll also, when the book comes out, get free access to the audiobook for 60 days, which my co-author and I voiced. We read it. So um, there are some bonuses if you order it early. So that's the deconstruction of Christianity. Chuck, I was um, impressed with the way that you handled the little video snafu that happened. I could tell that you're a veteran. You've been doing this a long time because you handled it well, just kind of laughed it off and corrected it and rolled with the punches. Well, I didn't want them to take the blame. I didn't, yeah. I think they knew. I I, and I knew that when you said that. I thought it was awesome. Do um, you have any, any advice for those who are younger, who are in ministry? Is there anything that is on your heart that you would say um, about those that are involved in ministering today, either in music or, yeah. or just in, in, from the pulpit or different things? Well, in my, what I do, I, the, most of the kids that come up afterward, uh, after a concert, they want to know how to get into Christian music. And I always start with, I said, well, why don't you make sure you're called into Christian music, you know? Be sure of your calling. That's the first thing. Uh, using an example, uh, there was a fellow named Tom Snipe who just died recently. Mm. He was in a group called Country Faith. Mm -hmm. And he went back and forth between being in the group and then being, he wanted to have a church and a Bible study. He finally wound up in Denver with a very successful Calvary Chapel put an organ on the stage so he could play some music some, from time to time, but his real calling was as a pastor. So I think it's really important to, to uh, be sure of your calling, what God's called you to do, even in music. What is it I convey through my lyrics? Um, and then stay close. And in this day and age, you know, at least this deconstruction, if you don't know what that is, is when people 
try to change, uh, sort of assess the, the things they've been taught their whole life, and then come up with a whole process of getting rid of the stuff that's not convenient to their, make, shaping God in their own image. And it's kind of like really important today to stay really into your Bible because there's so many things that can deflect you off the path of real truth, you know, of the truth of the Bible and a lot of supposedly really logical arguments out there about why you shouldn't believe this about God or that about God. If it's in the Bible, even if I don't understand it right now, I put it on the shelf and I say, I'm not getting rid of that. I'm just going to look into that more. I don't understand it, but the Bible is the Bible. And mm -hmm. I'm a sola scriptura guy. It's, <laughs> a, it's, it's, the Bible is the Bible to me. And I don't, I don't understand all of it, but I don't waver from it. And that's a good, just staying true to your calling, staying true to the Bible, staying true to the calling of the Lord in your life. Awesome. Thank you. Great advice. Well, Lisa, what was it like growing up with a dad that was out doing music all the time and well, it was, it was pretty cool. I was always really proud of him. So, like, I'd go to school, and if Dad was going to be picking me up, I'd be like, yeah, my dad, Chuck Gerard. My, my son does that now with me. He'll introduce me. Like, this is my mom. She has a YouTube channel. She's got, <laughs> she's got some subs. You know, he's just, like, so proud. So I felt that way, too. But it was really cool because I really learned how to – I hate the word perform because – it's, you know, that's not really what we're doing. We want to minister. We want to invite people into worship. But I learned that from him. So when I was real little, maybe seven, eight years old, he, if he had a local concert that we were, he was going to drive to, he would let me come. And at about halfway through the concert, he introduced me and I would sing with my, I just realized now like how funny that probably was to people that were expecting a Chuck Gerard concert. And then the seven-year-old comes up and sings like Sandy Patty song, you know. <laughs> and, um, but it really, I got to watch his approach to ministry, and it, it was very impactful for me even as I went through my own journey with the contemporary Christian music industry because I was really not comfortable with a lot of the stuff we encountered in CCM, like the photo shoots and the autographs and the autograph lines and all the things that people were doing because I was really discipled by, by my dad who really thought all that was kind of, you know, dumb and he would he wasn't in it for the money he wasn't in it for the fame in fact at the height of his fame he he left the industry and went independent before that was cool you know like before it was cool to do that um, at the height of his success because he wanted to have control over what God was speaking through him and through his music and so I had such a great legacy of that to build a foundation for how I'd even approach these these types of things even um, as a as a musician and as a a singer and then now apologist, which I never saw that coming, but um, mm. the Lord had other plans there. Yeah, and I should say, Alyssa Childer podcast, uh, it's awesome, uh, staying up with just all kinds of things. You guys will really be informed uh, by adding that to your list of things to listen to, and um, I certainly do, and I believe you'd be blessed by doing that. So I shared a story with um, Chuck before about how one of his songs impacted me, and he had asked if I would share that story, and so I want to do that. Um, it was uh, Little Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. Can you sing any of it? Sure. Okay. Uh, well, the lyric is Little Pilgrim walking. It is uh, just setting it up. It was a song about a friend of mine, a, a bunch of us in our hippie uh, seeking communal living before we came to the Lord, became Christians at the same time and became the nucleus of a love song. Well, Ernie did, my drummer friend, and so I wrote this song for him, started out that way, then I realized it had more universal impact, and I began to think of it more of a, a, a you know, a, a wider range of, uh, of the way the Lord could use the song. So it's Little Pilgrim Walking Down the Road of Life. I find that if I can, you never can recite your lyrics if you're not Just singing. Just sing it, you gotta sing it. Little Pilgrim, okay. <laughs> Little Pilgrim Walking Down the Road of Life I find that in your heart you're just the lonely one, for you see, upon that very road, my search for good and truth had its beginning. This is the line you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You take a little turn to the left, and you see what that path has to offer you. Then you got to make it back to the main road anyhow, and you have all that lost time to make up for. It's a sad thing to realize that you're all alone, that you're on your own again. There's more. So uh, <clears throat> I met the Lord in 1974 as a 14-year-old, 
and um, was sold out to Christ, met the Lord in the Methodist church, moved me to an Assembly of God church. And um, while I was there, I had a good friend of mine that went to Oral Roberts University, um, and he had really worked in my life. He had taught me hermeneutics, taught me how to study the Bible. Uh, and um, the pastor of the church that I attended, the Assembly of God Church, that's not to say anything negative about the Assembly of God Church, it's just this guy. 25 years old, he, uh, he would pace and preach. I was a front row setter. And um, when I came in one day and some old guy was teaching. Now I'm like, at this point, I'm like 16, right? Uh, he's 25, there's a 45-year-old teaching. So that's that. <laughs> and, um, and I said, what happened to Pastor Bob? And they said, well... He uh, had an affair, didn't you hear? Had an affair with the secretary, he's gone. Well, it devastated me. I got to see firsthand the kind of thing that a scandal can do to a church. And I called my, my buddy up, and, um, who had been a mentor to me, and um, his wife answered and in essence said, haven't you heard? He left me for another woman. And um, it devastated me. And I said, if this is what Christianity is about, I'm done with it. Now, I don't want to blame those guys for me leaving because in reality, had I had things right at that point with Jesus, I would not have thought that. I was 18 years old, and I wanted to know, I was being enamored by the world. I was being drawn out into the world. And this gave me that, I'm not saying I, I deliberately made the mindset to do that, but I did want to know what the world had to offer, and I thought it might have something. And um, my father had died when I was uh, 13 years old, and um, I had received some money at 18. I bought a 77 Jeep. This is in, in 70. This is in 70, um, eight, 78. So I bought a 77 Jeep, so a brand new Jeep. I bought a 68 Camaro. My mom actually got it for me with my money uh, for my birthday, 18th birthday. Um, I had a uh, RD350 Yamaha, um, and I had a girlfriend, and I found my identity wrapped up in a girlfriend. That's just what I did at that age. I think a lot of people do. And um, I walked away from the Lord. And I walked away from the Lord. I, I really walked away from him. And um, I remember witnessing to somebody while I was drunk. That did not work. <laughs> they did not come to Christ. Um, and um, during that year, God came after me. You know, the Bible says God will leave the 99 and come after the one. And um, he started by taking things away from me. This 77 Jeep, I was, I was 18, year, 18 years old. I didn't insure it. I was at Elephant Butte, four-wheeling. I ran into a barbed wire fence. It, the, the gas, the, the uh, carburetor flooded carburetors were on top of cars for you youngsters in the old days and it flooded the motor and burned it up caught on fire at the beach at, at um, elephant butte and burned up and i had to pay for that car even though i'd pay that car off even though i didn't have you know i didn't have insurance so i had to pay it off even though it was destroyed i had a 68 camaro and it was fast it was a 327 for your car guys muncie m20 uh 22 transmission m24 transmission a 308 rear end and that car could get up and go and my driver's license got up and left and <laughs> i um, I actually did seven days in jail for driving without a driver's license. And I got some hilarious stories about that, which I'll spare you guys right now. But it was frightening. My motorcycle got stolen and my girlfriend broke up with me. <laughs> this is a year after I've been into walking away from Christ. And so the girl that I'm with says to me, I don't want to see you. Take my car and go. Now, I don't drive so we're in her car. She says, take my car and go. So I take her car and I'm driving up I-25 towards my mom's house in Albuquerque. And there's a radio station there called K-Light. And they played rock music, Christian rock music. I grew up on it. From the time I, I first started driving, they let you get your, your driver's um, license at 15 and 8 months in Albuquerque. And since the time I started driving, I would listen to K-Light and minister to by all these songs. So I turn it over to K-Light and Little Pilgrim's on. And you guys heard that first section. And it ends with, it's a sad thing to realize you're all alone. And I realized I was all alone. But the last line of the song, you want to give it our... Um, and it's a glad thing to realize that you've, that you've... It's a glad thing to realize that you're not alone no more, that you found your way back home. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're lyricists. Good job. And I, um, I was in tears by then as I drove down the road. You take a little turn to the left to see what that had to offer you, but you got to make it back to the main road anyhow. You got all the, that lost time to make up for. And I drove home to my mother's trailer and I laid down on my bed and there's those buttons at the top of trailers. And I, I looked up at that button and I said, God, no longer what I want, but whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm yours. 
the faith I had as a 14-year-old to an 18-year-old was real, but it was more of the Jesus take the wheel faith. It was like, you're going to help me achieve what I'm going to achieve. It was never whatever you want. It was what I want to do, and you're going to help me achieve that. That kind of Christianity is taught all over the place today, by the way, and sung on country radio, too, by the way. You're going to help me. But when I said that, I, I said it, and that translated all the way over into to when I began to, to pastor, as a, first of all, teach Sunday school, then to, to be a youth pastor, and finally as a pastor. And I remember coming to Calvary Tucson and praying, Lord, again, whatever you want. If it's five people, I'll love them and care for them. If it's, if it's 5,000, I'll love them and care for them. Actually, I didn't even have faith to say 5,000 in that prayer. I said 300. I said, if it's five people or if it's 300, Lord, I'll love them and care for them. And I took a line from Chuck. Uh, they'll be the best love sheep uh, that there will be that's out there. But what I have in my life that your song was a part of is that Jesus came and got me. The Bible says he'll leave the 99 and go back to the one. And I know that he loves me and I know that he came and got me. And um, if you're here tonight and you've walked away from Christ, maybe you've been away for a long time. I, I didn't come back as a second class Christian. God didn't come back and say, you know, you walked away. You're not going to be able to go out and pastor. I, didn't, I came back as a, as a child of God. And you can too if you're here tonight. You need to make it right. Make it right. Call out upon his name. Nobody led me in a prayer. I simply said what was in my heart. And you can do that tonight. You can call out to him and say, I want to know you more. And if you're here this evening and you've never invited him in, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Uh, you're not a Christian because your parents were a Christian. You, you have to be born again. You have to receive him. So the Bible says in John 1, 12, as many as receive him, he gives the right to become a child of God to those who are called by his name. And when you do that, you become a disciple. You just don't, you just don't become a Christian you become a disciple like Peter, James, and John who left their nets and followed Jesus. When you are born again, you're going to leave those things. You're going to become a different person, an entirely different person, and you're going to follow him. And that's what happened during the time of the, the Jesus movement or the movement of Jesus, as was well said. And that's what can happen here today. You'll become a follower of Jesus. And it's not all, it's not all, all, all beautiful things. Jesus said, you want, you're going to be my follower? then deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. You're saying, I want to be a part of what God's doing. I'm going to surrender my life to him and I'm going to live for him and I'm going to die for him because he is my Lord. He is the righteous king and he died for you while you were still a sinner to demonstrate his love for you. And that's an absolutely amazing thing. And if tonight you want to give your life to Christ, I'll lead you in a prayer. At the end of this, but they're going to sing some more, but I'll lead you in a prayer. But... It's not a prayer that saves you. It's not raising your hand that saves you. It's, it's, it's you saying, I want to know you. Jesus said, not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. He said that there will say, come, some, some who will come and say, we cast out demons in your name. We did miracles in your name. Now, did they just think that or did they do it? And Jesus said, away from me, I never knew you. In John 17, 3, Jesus said, this is eternal life. This is Jesus telling us. You say, what does it mean to have eternal life? This is Jesus. That you know the one true God, he said, and the Son whom he sent. So you invite him in, and you become a disciple, and your whole life will be focused around the one who loved you and died for you. And we would all love to see you make that commitment today. Amen. All right. Well, it's really good to have you guys here. I want to thank you for it. Is there anything you would like to say before we... I would like to say that I am glad that I, com I committed my life to the Lord when I was 27, and now I'm 80. <laughs> and I'll have to look back at my life and say, man, I wish I'd have done that sooner. So don't wait till you're 80. Do it when you're young, and you'll be glad. I, I can't top that. <laughs> Both of that. It was great. Well, I just want to say that what a blessing for me to actually be able to tell my testimony next to, to you while you were in a part of what really worked in my testimony. I'm blessed. I almost can't ever get through that story without tears, especially when I get to the part that says you found your way back home. I choked up now as I say it. It chokes me up. God's love is real. He cares for you. He loves you. If you're away from him, come back to him, all right? So we're going to go on with the concert now, all right? <laughs> the 
The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So a great question to ask ourselves is, have we done that? This next song is a song I wrote when I was in a real specific spiritual battle, and I realized that Christmas time is really nice for a lot of people, and it's really hard for other people. Some of you are going through all sorts of different battles, maybe financial, maybe in your marriages, relationships, your jobs, whatever it might be. And this is a song I wrote to sing to myself, to remind myself to turn my eyes upon the Lord. So I hope it ministers to you as well. This is The Battle is the Lord's.
stand with us as we sing this final song. You all know it. Let's go out with a bang with joy to the world. guys pray with me? Father, what a great thing for us to be able to gather together here this evening and be able to be blessed by one who has been in the ministry for so long and by his daughter who's ministering today. We pray you'd bless them. We thank you for them being here. We pray that they would get home safely, that they would have been blessed by the time they spent with here us today. with us today. Lord, I also pray for those who are here who have walked away from you and you are calling them back as their son, as your son or daughter. I pray, Lord, that they would respond. And I pray for those who have never made a commitment to you, that they would today say, I'm going to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. As you died for me, I'm now going to die and live for you. And we thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can keep your heads bowed, please, and your eyes closed for just a couple of minutes. And I want to give you, and I'd also like to ask that no one would leave early. We'll dismiss you here shortly, I promise. If you're here today and you have never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm not going to lay it all out again. I, I already did that. You know what you're doing. You're becoming like Peter, James, and John, like Bartholomew, Matthew. You are saying, I will now follow you. I will lay down my life, deny myself. My life is no longer me. Paul put it this way. It is Christ that lives. 
not I. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live for him. If you're here today and you want to come back to the Lord, if you want to give your life to Christ for the first time, then I'm going to ask you to do something bold right where you are. Just raise your hand. You know what you're raising your hand for. You're going to live for Jesus the rest of your life. You're ready to now. Lift up your hand high. Lift it up so I can see it. I want to take time to acknowledge your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Again, lift your hands up high. All right. God bless you. Anyone else? Just raise your hand now. Just lift your hand up. This is, this is your moment, right? The moment you can come to Christ. All right, I'd like um, to everyone to pray a prayer with me, including the gentleman who raised his hand. And if you're online, want to give your life to the Lord, then you can pray this prayer as well. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, confess I confess that I'm a sinner. And I know my sin has separated me from you. But I also understand that I can be forgiven by the death of Jesus on the cross. So I invite you into my life and I turn from my sin that I can live for you as a disciple, as a follower of Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. And listen, Listen, the room was dark. If you raised your hand, I didn't see it. God saw it, okay? I didn't need to say, God bless you, in order for you to have given your life to Christ. But a reminder, raising your hand and praying a prayer doesn't save you. It's the faith that was in your heart that caused you to raise your hand and to pray that prayer. If you're online, you can text Ready for Jesus to 94000. You're going to get a link back. That's our New Believers card. Fill that out. We'll have our New Believers team that will meet with you. If you gave your life to the Lord here, there's a New Believers table on the lower section. Or if you want to know more what it's about to live for Jesus, stop by there we've got a great new believers team stop by there and talk to them prayer room that's off to my right we have pastors that are down here we have a pastor for all of you guys that's down here in the front if you have questions he would love to be able to answer them we'll have some more uh, that are down here as well and I want to you know this is it, it's it's a busy time of year but what a time for us to be able to focus in on Christ I hope that's happening for you I hope you now are really embracing that this is about Jesus who is being born. Next week, we've got our special times for services. Make sure to check that out. We're adding a noon service. The first one starts at 8.15. We've got uh, two on this campus and one on the other campus. And uh, so I look forward to seeing you guys there for our special Christmas service. I want to bless you before you go. A blessing is a spoken prayer. I want to use the one out of Numbers. It's got God's name in it three times. And God said, speak this name over my people in this way. It's got the Tetragrammaton in it. It's the oldest scriptures we have, 2,700 years old. We found two silver scrolls in Jerusalem. And every time I say, now may the Lord, that word Lord in the scriptures is uh, the, the, the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, the name of God. And so we're speaking the name of God over you as you go. And listen to how God said to do this. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you guys. Love you. Good to see you here. Hope you were blessed tomorrow morning. We're back in the book of Acts. We're going to be talking about Paul and Barnabas' split. Two people we love in the Bible had an argument, and we're going to talk about when Christians fight and what we can do about it, right? That's tomorrow morning. God bless you guys. We'll see you later on.